Tabitha Simmons. <laughs> Tell say your name. Say your name. Tabitha Simmons. Okay. <laughs> Tabitha Simmons, what do you do? I am uh, my host, motivational speaker, radio personality, whole lot of hats. <laughs> So, uh -oh. no, nah, I mean, it's, not, it's nothing crazy or anything nah, like that. Good. You know, we you're just good. we just like to, you know, get to know you a little bit. Okay. You know. All right. So, uh, you prefer nighttime or daytime? Nighttime. Nighttime. Why? Why is that? Ah, uh, because the world is quiet. Everybody else is asleep. Not, not, not in New York. Most people come out at nighttime. Devil, well, I mean, New York, okay. South Carolina, everybody else is asleep by nine thirty. Right now, right now, there's nothing going on after 9.30. Ain't nothing really going on after 9.30. This is a football game. It's pretty much it. Y'all have juke joints down there? In the country? Yeah. Juke joints? Where you from? I'm from Whiteville, North Carolina. We got a little something. A little something down at Sumter or something like that. A little something? A little something, something. Dirt floor? Uh, no, not quite. Concrete, though. Concrete? Does that qualify? That qualifies. As long as they have chicken wings. <laughs> there, and, you know. Oh, they got wings. Yeah. And they got the lady in the back with the arm. Oh, so the food she, is delicious. Oh, the food is delicious. <laughs> the food is delicious. So, yes. did you classify yourself as a sexual person or a sensual person? Um, I can be both. My personality is uh, my personality uh, can fluctuate between both. And when you, okay, when you say fluctuate, so mm -hmm. is that like a situation where? Depends on the person, or is it dependent on the circumstance? Well, it depends on my mood. It depends on the, it's so many, so many different variables that go into determining which which way I go. What's relationship chapter like? Truth, truth, or what truth, you, truth. Or what you want from me? Transparency. Uh, when you say relationship tab, I, I'm very laid back. I'm I'm a uh, I'm very uh. <laughs> I'm silly. I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> you, you, you laughed. I want to know that thought. What, what I, I, that I, thought? I, I actually want to know this. And, and, it, and it has to do with what he's talking about okay. right now. Okay. Okay. You're not the average woman, though. When you say now, when you say average, what do you mean? Depending on you're, that's you're, an eye of the beholder kind of question. You're not the average woman physically. No. no. That's what I mean. That's correct. So how tall are you, by the way? Six two. You're six two. Indeed. And is that without heels? That's without heels. And with heels, what like what how how high is that heel? About a little bit of four, four or five. Four inch. Yeah. So you're 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 like six five. There you go. Six six. Indeed. Right now. Hmm? No, you six two. It's a four inch heel. You're six six. About right? six six. I'm about six six. I'm mm -hmm. need you to get your math mathematicians to <laughs> <All right. Whatever. laughs> So with being being a taller woman, you know, growing up. Um, I'm pretty sure that has its own challenges as far as what you might uh, want and also what uh, how other people may look at you and may or may not approach you at the same time cause of your statue. <laughs> so can you give us a little bit about that, you know, maybe a particular experience where, you know, it was an issue or a non-issue? It's always an issue. I'm intimidating. I'm very intimidating. I get that all the time. Um, I know that and I use that to my advantage uh, because the way I see it is this, uh, that keeps people from coming at me with the BS. You got to be on your game when you're coming to me because I'm not having it any other way. And it is kind of, um, it, in the beginning I, I really wasn't feeling it because I was so tall and I never really wore heels because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to make it worse because I felt like men were afraid of me. But to some degree, you know, the older I got, the more... I was like, okay, well, it's intimidating. It's not a bad thing, but hey, it kind of worked out. It still, it worked out for my favor. Do you feel dominant? Um, Are you really dominant when you come into a room? Are you absolutely feel? because of my height and my stature? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. What's the shortest man you've ever dated? Uh, five ten. How did how did that work out? Did was the relationship okay? Could he deal with you being, you know, your stature? Oh, I mean, I tell people all the time, it works when she's very, very attractive. It works. Uh, because you don't really see, and I know that sounds superficial, that sounds wrong, but I'm, I'm giving it to you like, I know. But it works. If she's attractive, he's shorter, and, you know, I mean, it just works. It just does. So, so 
So back back to um, back to that. You ever been to Essex Festival? I know. I know. You, do you travel out of the country at any point in time? Like Mexico? I know you lived overseas for a while mm -hmm. and all of that. Nah, lately. <laughs> Not lately. Mm -hmm. What I'm getting at is like, you know, whenever you're out of seas, I mean, or out of the country or mm -hmm. somewhere else, and you're out of our environment, mm -hmm. cultures are different. Mm -hmm. Do you experience a different type of uh, look when you're in a different uh, cultural setting? It's still no. the same? It's still the same. When I go to California, and you know it's a melting pot of genres of, of people, right. no. When I go upstate to New York, mm -hmm. no. Here is the only where people look at me like I don't think I've ever seen anybody your height that mm -hmm. looks like you. Right. That's what I get when I'm here, and right. this is home for me. Mm -hmm. But when I go other places, it's like, oh, we've seen her kind before. Nothing's really... So, yeah. What's your best body part? My legs. Hands down? Hands down. Why? My legs. I don't know because that's the focal point. For me, really? that's, that's the focal point. That's the focal point. That's, that's what, what I would. Point. Listen, that's, that's what I'm going to say. But I'm going to tell you right now because I wear a lot of V uh, cut shirts, I know what the focal point is. But I don't want to acknowledge that. But for me, <laughs> my legs. I'm like six foot two. I mean, you can't help but notice. It's yeah, but, but but you're but you're you're a, a total package type woman. Mm. You got more than just legs going on. Well, when you said for me, I know everybody got their pick. I've heard your well, dimples yeah, yeah, when yeah. you smile. I've heard all kinds of things. Right. But for me, I would say the focal point would have to be my legs. Okay. I could. I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. I'm not. From a guy's point of view, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. No, no, no. You can't be wrong. I mean, <laughs> guys, they don't really care. They look at everything. They'll take you out. You know. <laughs> In and out and up and down, mm. they don't. <laughs> men don't really discriminate to me that much, you know. You got a lot of picky ones out there. There's some. Listen, picky you got a lot of picky men out there, yeah. but then you got some who don't give a damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Can I say damn? No, you can say damn. I can say you can damn. Say damn. You can say damn. Sure. You can say let me let me ask you this. You grew up. You had a, uh, a sizable family. Yes. Uh, growing up. Mm -hmm. What'd you tell us? Two sisters. Two sisters. And four brothers. Four brothers. Right. So in, 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 in that dynamic growing up and like was your family like a church going family and everything? Uh, and no. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. The church part came from my grandparents. Right. Uh the rest of it, my mom shh knew. My mother liked the party. That's where I get that's where I first learned how to um love myself and, and being a woman and, and, and dressing a particular type of way because my mm -hmm. mother very attractive. Very, very attractive. Is she very attractive? Yeah. Really? You look like sisters. Yeah, my mother's I mean, you're a beautiful woman. Yeah, my mom. She's more beautiful? Yeah, that's my really? mom. That's where it comes from. Wow. That's where I get it from. That's, that's where I get it from. Get it from I get it from my mama, straight off the apple tree. Wow. <laughs> straight off of it. What does your sister look like? If you had my sister her. is the same. My yeah. sister is the shorter version of me. If really? you, if we're standing side by side. We look exactly alike. Her stature is the opposite. She's got more ass and more hips, and <laughs> I've got more top and more legs. Right, but she's right, shorter right. than I am. But right. other than that, it's just the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got a beach family. That's down, what it is. Down you, my mom, and my sister. <laughs> that was pretty damn good, to be honest. With you. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but what's the best thing about being in a relationship? You don't have to be by yourself. When you go through things, you don't have to go through it alone. I would say that's the best thing about being in a relationship. What's the worst thing? You not alone. <laughs> you, you with somebody all the time. You're not alone. <laughs> that's like a S22 like huh? situation. Right? Huh? Damn that's like damn a damn double edged sword. sword. You got somebody there that's when straight. you need them, and then they there when you like, ugh. Does a man have to be aggressive to be able to handle you? To be able to do what now? To be able to handle you. Yeah. When you say, and you know what, I, and I'm glad you asked that question, no. In actuality, you have to be strong mentally because everybody has a story. I've been through some things, you know, and, and everybody that you meet isn't always going to be top shelf pretty in what you see. It's the behind the scenes that you're looking for somebody to be able to deal with. And I, I'd like to say that I was damaged goods, you know what I'm saying? And so to be able to have somebody that's strong mentally to be able to handle me is what I would say aggressive. He can't be soft because if I can run over you, I don't need you. Are you damaged anymore? I was. I am um, 
I'd like to think that I am healed. I was damaged goods. You know how you get the can that drops off the, what, what, the what shelf? What type of damage? Uh, I lost, well, I lost a lot of people in my life. Uh, my grandmother raised me, and that was only, um, that happened only two years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's like a mother to me. And then I lost my uncle that helped raise me. I've lost a lot of good people that were in my personal circle. And so at that point, when you lose so many people that are close to you, and, you know, on top of that, being in an abusive relationship, which is probably a subject for another time. Um, no, that's a subject for this time. You end up. Were you in an abusive relationship? I was. Actually, it was. Yeah. Physically abusive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, really. To go with the mental part. To well, go well, with... Well, let me ask you this. How yeah. long were you in that relationship? Uh, 13 years. Ooh. That's a long time. 13 years. How long... Well, when, when you, at the start of a relationship over the 13 years, how long were you in a relationship when it became... When it started to become abusive? Was it abusive at the beginning? Or did it no. just kind of go in that direction at the point? I mean, what... How was that? No, it ended up being that way after, like... I would say the last three, two, three years. So it was at the end of the relationship? Yeah. How? Good. No, I'm just want to know, I mean, y'all, obviously you were in there, so if it, you said it was 13 years? Yeah, 13 years. So it was two or three, the two or three years, so it was like the last portion of it was three. So what changed? That's why I guess what I'm trying to ask them. What changed? Because you were good for 10. I'm assuming you were good for 10, yes. or did it start to... Oh, we were good for 10. We were good throughout the entire thing. What changed? Because thing? If, if it got physical at the latter part of it, what changed if he, if that wasn't the norm? What happened? Um, Don't sugarcoat it. The job status kind of changed. Uh, uh, he, he became a, uh, a dancer, a stripper, male entertainer. And um, he was on steroids, and the the amount of steroids he was taking made him uh, aggressive. That that follows, because ten years is good. Steroids, it does change your mood and everything like that. Yeah. And then he became aggressive. Was there any like, do you, do you have any ownership on that, or is is it just purely on his side of it? Uh. I could say aggressive wise, I'm not. I don't, um, being raised by my grandparents, um, I don't put my hands on no guy unless right. he put his hands on me and I don't have another option. Right. Uh, but no, uh, sometimes it would be simple things uh, like um, not agreeing in an argument or um, doing something the wrong way or messing something up and not fixing it. Small, small little things, it was just so like an instant like setup. So it's always like right there on the edge. Yeah, and like, it, like a little setup. Things, like, yeah, any little thing was like a setup. Right. Yeah. So now you're now you're there and you're walking on pins and needles like all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. You don't know what the hell. Don't know what to say. Don't know how the person's mood is and and so forth. Yeah. How was the transition in getting out of that? I know a lot of women. Yeah. What was that the, plan like? Have the issue with getting out and figuring out how to get out. So how Let me, I want you to answer that question. But I want to say this, in conjunction with that. I've talked to women before and they've been in like those type of relationships and they're historically very hard to get out of once you're in deep like that. And a few of them I talk to, they try to like make it, make it like strategic. They do little things to try to set it up, but it's like a long cycle as far as leading up to that. They'll, they'll, they'll do this, they'll do that, and they reach this plateau and it just like builds up to a point before they, they have enough to where, I guess, mentally and emotionally where they, they can exit, but for you, on his question, how, how did it happen for you? It was uh, pretty much the same. Uh, you go through, it, it was uh, the smallest things. Uh, actually, the breaking point for me was I made dinner. For example, I made dinner this particular evening, and mm -hmm. it was something that he really didn't want, so he threw it. And it was at that he moment. Threw you? No, in the kitchen. Okay. Uh, it was at that moment that I decided to say, that's it. Nothing else. The, the the physical part didn't matter, the cheating part didn't matter, none of that stuff mattered. It was that moment, for whatever reason, it was that, in that particular moment, that made me decide to say, that's it. So, year 10 to year 12 and a half, mm -hmm. were you checking out before that, or did it have to go to year 13 before you checked all the way out? As far as, uh, when you mean checking out, like mentally? I was in the process of checking out. It happened, 
that particular day, but mentally, you have to be. Um, I'm in the category of women, you know, sometimes you see women and they tell their story and say, uh, I would never, I would never stay, or I would kick his ass, or I would never even allow him. But I was in the category that allowed it. I stayed. I kept going I back. That's, I think that's most I was the in the category. From what I've seen and the people I've talked to, yeah. that's generally how it happens yeah. most of the time. Yeah. Well, the um, emotional part of it is a big part of it. I think people get so caught up in what I would do. Until you're in something, that's right. you can't tell me what you're going to do until you're in it or been through it. That's so right. I, I always, people say that a lot, and I always say, okay, that's right. Know, yeah, ain't no need for me to go back forward with you because you ain't been in that. So that's you right. You can't tell me what you're going to do. That's right. Um, but kind of stay away from that a little bit. Going through that, how was it for you to get back to dating or trying to find somebody for yourself? Because a lot of times that type of relationship hinders you from going forward? It did. Uh, two years. I stayed uh, single and solo for two years. I felt like um, I knew I was damaged. I cannot. It's like when, you, when you're when you choosing canned goods in the store and you wonder why the damaged goods is on the front. Could they not have either put this someplace else? I didn't put myself out front because I knew I was damaged. I had nothing to offer any man, anybody at that time. So I gave myself not particularly two years per se, um, it just took that long for me because you people have to understand when you have an emotional tie with someone and you have a soul tie with someone and you keep binding that soul tie over 13 years, it's hard to just break off that situation because you have in one ear, and I know most women can attest to this, is where you have women that say um, or that will tell you their men said, you know, you're not going to do this without me, you can never do this, and you go through that period of wondering, did you make the right decision? Did, are you making the right moves? Can you survive without this person that you've been with for so long? And it's just, it, it's difficult to, to break that off. And so I gave myself as much time as I needed, not rushing. But then I knew I was ready to get back out there in the dating world because when I started to um, understand that you have to give somebody, love is amazing. I, I would be lying if I sat here and said the entire 13 years was bad. It wasn't. I remember what it was like when it was good and that feeling of loving somebody and having somebody love you. You want that again. I don't care who you are. You're single, but if you've had true, if you've had love and you know what that feels like, you're missing something and you want that back. And so I decided, you know what, everybody else shouldn't have to pay for that, but I also needed to make sure that I was good because damage people damage people and I did not want to bring somebody else into my situation because I was damaged and messed their entire world up because that's of what I was. That's, that's a very good quote. I'm going to have to write that down. Damage people damage. damage. People. Double entendre. That's hardcore. I'm going to write that down. Right there. So after this, have you found love after this? Absolutely. I found it? somebody that, uh, yeah. What is it like? Tell me what, what love is like. We talked about the, the, the horrific part of it. What's, what's love like? It's different. Um, when you have someone that that loves you in spite of uh, the things that you've gone through, uh, the things that uh, in spite of the person you are because you've been through so much and, and finding someone that loves every part of you, not just the physical part that most people see. When you find somebody that loves every part of you, every mm -hmm. part of your past, because if they love you now, they can't have you now without having your past because who you are now came from who you were in the past, if that makes sense. You cannot be this person you are right now without having to have gone through things in your past to make this person that everybody sees before them. Absolutely. Yeah. And and to be able to find someone and you know, um, after losing my grandmother, that kind of love, that parental love, I thought that was a done deal. I prepared to be by myself because I knew I was never going to find somebody to love me unconditional in spite of. Never. I could never do no wrong to her. Never. And I knew I would never find somebody, I just knew, that would be able to love me at the same capacity that she did. That's, that's a hell of a thing, unconditional love. Mm -hmm. I don't think people talk about that enough in a deeper manner. 
as far as what you actually look for when you look for someone out there to actually be with. It's, it's, it's one thing to find someone that you, you're good with, you can be cool with, you can go That's out, right. do stuff with and everything, but <clears throat> to find someone that you unconditionally, no matter what, and you know you're good with them, and they're good with you, that's an, that's an, that's an next level. It's amazing. It's a, that's an next It's amazing. Level. It is. It is. Well, and that's the, deep. The amazing thing that I see is that when you say something about love, your facial expression changed. You felt that. And that's amazing to have somebody that you feel that connected to and you feel that love from yeah. to give you that feeling after what you've gone through. That's, mm -hmm. that's got to be amazing. So very, very happy for you and glad that you've been able to, to get to this space. Thank you. This nigga all sentimental. Hey y'all, I done got everybody and everybody out of here sentimental. Let me get myself together. First and foremost, this show is about this show is about the real thing. I'm doing fucking problem. I'm trying to watch the show. He said leave them the hell alone. He's like bombs, he's like bombs and stuff. Oh, and like I'm proud of it too. See me the fuck alone. I'm like proud. All right, let me change the script. We gonna we gotta change. Let me light it up a little. First and foremost, this show take you all over the place. You're right. Look, my my makeup point was not fucking. I know, know that. I'm in front of it. I'm glad y'all stopped and keep it rolling. Okay. That's the first Look, time I, I heard her speak that. Like, I saw the real truth sometimes. Yeah. The truth is real. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real talk. I meant that to her. That was pretty deep. But that's all right. See now you know. She yeah. said that. Shit. Never, I've never seen that. Yeah, I've never seen that. It's a beautiful that's thing. First time. See the real women show brings shit together. Bring people together, man. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Bring love in your life, shit, nigga. Now you know. Now you know. Okay, so not, I, I didn't know. You, you know now. I got footage. Yeah. So um. Something I've been wanting to know about for a long, long time. You know, you know, from way back in the day. Like early, early this evening. <laughs> <laughs> like about three hours ago. Like early All right. And everything. Um, can you tell me if, if if it's really important to know? Don't look at me on what ask the question. Come on with it. She said come on with it. Nope. <laughs> does size matter? Yes. Damn. Why? It just does. Why? When you put on your shoes, does size matter? She yeah. does. There you go. Why? Well, you ain't walking around here. Listen. I'm going to tell you right now, though. When you put on. Listen now. I'm going to tell you right now. Real talk. I have to think about it. I have to think about it. You got to think about that. I do that analogy. You don't walk around. You don't want no shoe that's too big for you. You know what fits you. You know you wear. If you wear a nine and a half, ten, that's the size that works for you. You're comfortable. Okay, you're saying that. All right. You said needs to fit you. Yeah. You hear such things such things to be. Yes, you know your size. Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> you, sh as a woman, you should know your damn size, just like shoes. You should know what's too big. You ain't got no. I'm 40. So every woman you ain't has got no size. point. Hey, you should have. You should know what size works for you. What size will do it? What size will get you there? And what size will you about to change into the Hulk? You know what size. Don't let them fool you. They know. <laughs> If, unless they just haven't been, listen, you have had, to, in order for you to know your size, you had to at least be with maybe like three or four. And I'm talking about so, so being. So you gotta have a nice spread. You gotta have a little, a little, a little, a little bit of numbers. Yeah, yeah, it's a nose. Yeah. A couple of numbers. Yeah. Like when I, when I buy my heels out of the store, not all size 11s work for me. Right. Same concept. Huh. You know what? I, I never, never thought, thought about, about that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna, if they, if they, women are lying to themselves when they say size doesn't matter. When I hear that, nah, you, unless this your very first time and you've only had one and that's the one you've been stuck with, it does matter. Because a micro penis just does not cut it. You don't even. 89% of the time. 89. Listen, and they, and for some, 
I just want to say, and I'm, I'm glad I'm wearing them. You, but listen, no, no, yeah. no. <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you're trying to just, I don't know why that works. I don't know why that would work for somebody unless they're a virgin. I don't know why right. that would work unless you just really don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Right. Right. But then you're wasting time. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, just thinking about it, you know, nothing against. Any type of sex or trans? No, nothing, LAPC, nothing at all. Nothing. DVDs and all them and everything. I don't know what the hell you just paid. Well, I'm, make a like point. I'm about to make a point. Like the police department. <laughs> it sounds like what the hell you just a woman, a woman that likes another woman or is in love with another woman and mm -hmm. married another woman and everything like that, they do scissoring mm -hmm. and everything. So they're just rubbing their clits and mm -hmm. all this type of stuff together and everything. So if you think about it in that respect, if a, person, if a man has a micro penis and, it, and they, he gets with a woman just does it just likes the sensation but not the penetration of it. And you know what? You vet. You see what I'm saying? You're on my line. Are you following me where I'm going for that? <laughs> if you're looking for it, uh, then I, I can't. I, I can't. I don't know how to answer that because that's a to me that's a disappointment. I, I can't deal if I wanted well, that. Well, really likes ultimately the penetration part of it. It's a disappointment. Okay. But a woman that doesn't like the uh, penetration. I mean, tell you, I got to go ahead. Well, I mean, if she doesn't. Uh, well, it depends. Again, it, to each its own. Y'all talking to me today, so this is what I'm going to say about say Tabitha. I don't know how to say about other women and what other women want, but that's just Tabitha. But in in the sense of what, I understand what he's saying, but in the sense of uh, if you don't really care for the penetration for whatever reason or another, then it, at that point it really doesn't matter because you can deal with the alternative. If I answered that correctly. You answered it. Okay. How comfortable are you with your body? Uh, very much so. And Very I, much so. I ask that question because a lot of times when you talk about men and women, sometimes women aren't as comfortable with their body as mm -hmm. they say they are. Mm -hmm. So within the scope of being in a you know situation with a man or a relationship, you know, no, I don't want the lights on. I don't want you to see me like this. But let me tell you, it's then the person you're with has to make you feel comfortable, even if you're not comfortable with the way you are. For that moment, if it's if it's not your boyfriend or your husband or whatever situation, listen, your side piece, your next door neighbor, the mailman, whoever it is that you happen to be with, all I'm simply saying is, if that person makes you, it's it, they make you feel a particular way right. to be able to keep the lights on. It really doesn't matter. But if you, are, it's there, you know, this should be something that's noticeable. Men, you could pretty much notice if a female is, you know ashamed of some part of her body but then it depends on who you are to that person if you care you care if you don't you don't but if you if he cares and you're in a relationship with somebody per se let's speak on that um they make you feel comfortable about with the lights on or maybe a little half a spare tire over here or what your freckles on your ass whatever you whatever you don't like about yourself they love it whatever don't be uncomfortable about it if you like it you should love it absolutely <laughs> What's the most public place you've ever had sex? Oh! Let me think. Um, I probably had to say at the park. Don't say at the park. At the park. Long time ago, I'm in a whole relationship. Long time ago, <laughs> at the park, you can really get me killed. <laughs> <laughs> long time ago. We're we not, we not dating anything that you've done. So yeah, yeah you're fine. Long time yeah. We're on threesomes and all that now? No. no, no, no. <laughs> no, not yet. What, 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 how do you come out the how, back? How, just, how, you, come how does this silent. happen? Don't just come back. Don't laugh people. at him. How does this happen? Right. Don't come how back does this happen? Anyway. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have a. Well, then, hush. Because so. <laughs> the question was, the most public place you've ever had sex. Mm -hmm. That I don't know where you got through so far. But anyway, <laughs> you got a choice. Okay. You got a choice between quickie before you go to work or noon or noomer. I guess that's what they call it. Quickie noomer. I don't know how to say it. Quickie in the morning before you go to work or noon. <laughs> Uh, well, if you had a choice, if you got a choice. You only get one. He leaving. You only get one of that. He can either hit you up on, hit you up at lunchtime, or he can get quick in the morning. Lunchtime ain't good because I won't go back to work. I'll tell you right now. 
nine times out of ten, I probably took off anyway. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll take the noon. But no, I'll take the morning. That's what we said. Morning. Then before you go to work. Before you go to work. Let me ask you something a little bit more powerful. Let's get Big house, small house, medium sized house, three bedrooms, five bedrooms, six, mansion, pool, what what you want? Okay. What, what what works for you? It really doesn't matter. Doesn't as matter. long as my uh I cook cook, so as long as my kitchen is a different size and my bathroom is a different size, I need my own space. Kitchen bathroom. Kitchen and bathroom, other than that. It can be whatever. I don't care what as long as those are adequate. As long as that's adequate. For me. Without having to be in a relationship, okay. can you have sex with someone? What do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Meaning, can you have sex with, if you meet a man, you know it's not going to be a relationship, can you personally? One night stand, is that what you're asking? Like, just that's not, just it? may not be a one night, maybe it's twice, twice. could be three times, it, it doesn't matter how many times. But can you do that without with knowing that there's no relationship? Absolutely. Oh, can you asking me if I can do that without an emotional attachment? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, that goes back. And you know what? That's that's something that um, before this relationship that um, I mastered because of losing so many people. You don't attach feelings to it. So then it was never an issue with me. It was never an issue. You can turn it on and turn it off just like that. Even after having it turned on, I could always turn it off ASAP. Oh yeah, it's possible. All right, now. Yeah. Have you? I mean, with being being able to do that, uh -huh. you know, men men can be stalkerish. Listen, I'm gonna tell you. I, that's why I said uh, me. Uh, I was the only person that could do that. Yeah. Uh, nine nine times out of ten, they they uh, couldn't do that. They didn't yeah. understand. I don't know why it's a problem when we do it. Right. But not when they do it. But yeah, men can be, summer. you know, you learn as you grow, you learn that yeah. um, that kind of energy that you've given off that attracts people in that manner. You learn not to uh, share that with everybody because not everybody can handle the type of right. energy that you have to give. Right. They can't. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They can't handle. They can't handle that. And men, you know, this other thing, I gotta say this and you give your input on this and everything, because we're women do prefer it. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Men have feelings too. Yeah, we know. You but y'all need to act like it. Sometimes y'all be walking around here like robots. It's some men. I don't have that kind. I have a very, um, I have a man that's emotionally, he's in touch with his emotional side. If something hurts him, if something bothers him, if but something. But then y'all call him like punk so, and never. Soft no, and no, not, not y'all. Y'all fuck somebody else no, and no, shit no, no, like no. that because, no. because you like, yo, this nigga soft and not me. you like him and you'll be around him and everything, then you'll be like, yeah, whatever. You know why that? You know why there are some women I can't get on that train because but I'm not hear, one of those. Say is real. But what you're saying is absolutely right. I have friends who think that way about men, but and this is why men are reluctant to share that softer side because of how women react to it. Women have to understand, and y'all have to grow up, and they gotta learn that that doesn't mean just because he shows you or he cries about it, he's not a freaking robot. He's human. He has feelings too. You're, you're, you're equivalent a robot to like being emotionally. And yeah, and without afraid. emotions. Because men, the persona of men, when you see a man, a man, it's it's the whole, it's so much responsibility that's attached to a man. He has to remain a man at all times. He can't show fear. He can't show emotion. Right. He can't like the, lack this. He's got to be strong, the backbone, all of that good stuff. And so by him holding, portraying this, that's how women expect, that's what we, that's what women expect to see. But then when you have a man who, there are men out here, women who have both, who can show both. But sometimes it takes a little bit of time. That doesn't mean that he's soft. It just means that now you know he has real feelings because they do. Talk to they, but, but, they but, do. But then they'll go fuck somebody else because they're not getting that hardness that they want. Because they think he's too empathetic and she, he's too affectionate to her needs and everything like that. But she want that nigga to come in with a hard ass dick and just pound the fuck and just do shit and just tell her what to do and all this type well, of I'm stuff. Gonna tell you, what, 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 that aggressive, dominant type thing. Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now. Sometimes that's all right. I never said you can't have that. I never listen. I never said you can't have both. Cause sometimes I'll say it. Uh, first of all, tell me what to do when you come in, and I'm nah, 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 shut the fuck up. Get over here. Well, I, 
right now. You grab them damn pearls. <laughs> yes, sir. So sometimes it's sometimes <laughs> yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> It's everywhere. Beads yeah, everywhere. everywhere. I'm yeah. just saying, you know, just in general, you know, I mean, it's 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 a it's a balance. If you find somebody, if a man that has a balance that's not afraid to show uh, the way he feels, I, I don't want no damn crybaby. I will say that. I don't want no man that doesn't have a backbone because if I'm looking for you to lead me, I can't expect for you to lead. You can't hold me up, and your back is not strong. I can't do it the whole time. Right, right, right. Hmm? You make more money than he does. Hypothetically. Okay. How do you balance that with his masculinity if that is a problem for him? I wouldn't be with someone that uh, has an issue with that. You wouldn't? No. But I how can't. would you know that? I mean, oh, you know. Oh, you, you know. know right away, you think? That's what it was in my last relationship, so I know. Oh, okay. I know you when know, I see it. Yeah, I know when I see give me a, it. Give me an incident where it like, clicked. Uh, going to work and making a certain amount a week and them saying um, things like uh, oh you think you all of that or oh, you think uh, oh you don't I guess you don't need me anymore huh stuff like that that lets you know this person has a problem with the money that you're making right. and your stature and what you're trying to do and that also lets you know that this person is always going to want you down here and that's what he's going to do to keep you here mentally mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. being submissive okay is that a thing Mm, sometimes, sometimes I, I, I allow it, but my demeanor and who I've become, uh, sometimes it doesn't allow for it. But I will tell you this, I, allow a man, I, I, I have to allow a man to be a man. Sometimes it's really difficult to do because of where I've come from and the things I've been through, especially with my last relationship, because I was that way. I didn't make a move without him. I didn't do anything without him. There was no decisions made without him. That's where I've come from. And since gaining my independence back after that and being the person that I was before I met that person and got into a relationship with them, it's, I don't have a problem with it. Like bedroom wise, I don't have a problem with that. That's attractive, you know, but again, most men like that in a woman. And when they look at me, they're like, hell no, nah, ain't nothing submissive about her at all. Not a thing. But you'd be pleasantly surprised. They would be surprised to know. I have a soft side. I really do. And I, and I can very well be. I allow him to lead. If that's what, once I understand that you have the capabilities to do that with me, right. you, you can do it. Right. Time to tell me this. Yes. <clears throat> tell me three things that <laughs> real women prefer. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can be anything. Now, it, we, <laughs> it can be across the spectrum. It doesn't matter what it is. It, it what can it be physical. It can be not tangible. I mean, it can be whatever. whatever. Real women prefer. Lord have mercy. Why y'all? I have to meditate. You should have. I ain't even got a chance to study or write it down or nothing. You don't have to. You don't it's have you. To. This is you. This real is women you. want. Uh, yeah, this is just you, you. You are the real let's woman. Let's say. Uh, what do you prefer? And, and when it comes just just in general or when it comes to men or what do you want from me? When what, it comes whatever to whatever you want. What's on your top three? As a woman, you're a real woman. Three things that you prefer. Your top three. In general, in life, just to, to be successful. Um, Good man in the bedroom, a big dick. Is what yeah, I'm saying. Right, right. Listen, that's what else. We're gonna keep that one. That's important. We're gonna keep. We can't throw that one away. We gotta keep the second one. Mm, let me see. Realness, just across the board. I think that's a general answer. Realness. We prefer for everything in our personal space to just be real and upfront, so that we'll know how to how to handle. <clears throat> Our personal circle, our friends and our family. We just prefer just to be real. That's it. Nice. <laughs> no, you missed the second one. I ain't gonna say it again. You cut me off for the second one. Oh, it's in there. Yeah. That's all right. You didn't hear that? I don't know how to do it. See, you have to cut them off. All right. Tabitha. Yes. You have been wonderful. Oh, thank y'all so much for having me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Your transparency was 
It was wonderful. It was, it was luminous. Hey, I like that. Like to use big words. Hashtag, I'm going to put that in there. Hashtag, <laughs> Hashtag luminescent. <laughs> <laughs> so with that having been said, thank you for being a real woman. And that's it. Absolutely, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hey.